Well, good morning, everyone. For any of you that uh, I haven't met, my name is Dave Filippo. I've been a member of uh, St. Albans for eight years, and I'm a member of the Parish Hall Committee, and look forward to sharing some information with you this morning. I'm Richard Colvin. I've been a member for 10 years. Um, it's great to see, just following up on Carmen's sermon, it's great to see everybody back here um, and seeing that full parking lot. The funny thing is about the seed for this whole effort started in that parking lot. And I'll, if you catch me afterwards, I'll tell you how that all started. But it's very exciting to be here today. And we appreciate everybody sticking around for this presentation so we can talk to you about our campaign of Grow, Gather, Serve. Um, we want to share this vision with you. It's relatively short. It's 15 slides, so we'll keep it brief. We're going to ask that you hold your questions till we get through the slides, and then we'll have ample time to answer any questions that anybody has, and we're happy to, to address any topics at all. There's a team of people on the Parish Hall Committee that have been working for over three years now to make this vision a reality. Uh, we started working very hard, had some great momentum, and then we had this interruption from a thing called COVID, and we really decided it was appropriate to pause while we worked through all of the challenges and the uncertainties that the COVID pandemic brought. But now it's time to bring that back. Um, well, it's an interesting story, and it's interesting how the Holy Spirit works in our, our parish life. During that pause period where we were doing nothing, okay, we just stopped and said, we're not gonna move forward with the campaign. We had several parishioners come forward and said, we heard rumors that you're thinking about a parish hall. We'd like to make a donation to that parish hall. And in a period of time where nothing was happening, we had $170,000 in gifts given for the eventual parish hall, which is a pretty amazing story, I think. So uh, this is a picture some of you may recognize. <laughs> right? We are a growing congregation, but we're running out of space. This is two weeks ago. This was Palm Sunday right here. All right? We had over 200 people at the 1030 service. All right? And this is what our narthex looked like, trying to have people gather and talk and visit. As we continue to grow, our biggest constraint is space and the ability to prepare food. Right? Our kitchen that we have back there is really not sufficient to prepare food for a large gathering, um, nor do we have the space to have the kinds of gathering activities that we would like to have. And one thing I always like to say about this is raise your hand if you've ever volunteered to move the chairs and, and cushions back <laughs> in this place. Raise your hand if you never want to do that again. <laughs> I think we're there. <laughs> So this is the picture. This is the rendering of what we would hope for our parish hall to be. As you can see, we would build it on the side of our building by the parking lot with easy access to the parking lot and access to the main building as well. It basically sits where our playground is today. We would move the playground over because it's important to have a playground given the dynamics of our parish and our preschool. Uh, but we would build the parish hall uh, right there on that, on that side of our property. And if you think about it, the parish hall will enable many of our most uh, cherished missions and allow us to grow as a congregation and gather. So think about, for ourselves, having more space and a better kitchen for all of our parish events. Our ability to serve and have a space where we can really welcome the community for events and programs. And we can continue to have adequate space for the ministries of the Ministry of Fun, our preschool, and La Escolita. So I was supposed to jump in at the end of the last slide. We have put stakes out. James Wally was, put stakes out this morning. So when you go down for the party, those stakes with the little flags on them, those are the corners of our parasol. So you can begin to see it and see that playground just moved over and that's where we'll be gathering. So in all these things, again, just like Carmen preached to us this morning, I'm seeing faces that I haven't seen, I feel like, in two years. I mean, I wanted to give Kate Buckner a bear hug that probably still would be holding her if I could, just to haven't seen it. It's my fault. But I see a lot of new faces. I see the Amadios were in here. I wanted to talk with them, and I want to meet a lot of the new people that I don't know yet. But before I get the chance to, a lot of you are going to scoot. And I know that. That's life. you got busy, busy schedules. But I want to put one thing out there that might hold you back for five more minutes so I get a chance to talk to you. So imagine us right down there watching your kids play or watching our kids play on that playground, having a cup of coffee and getting that little bit more connection as we regroup. So Richard used the word imagine, okay? So imagine if we have a hot breakfast on Sunday mornings between services where we could all meet each other, as Richard said, and have a chance to visit, okay? Yes, 
<laughs> Please, oh God, I got your boots right here, okay? Like a good plan, huh? All right. Imagine a space where we could have a Lenten supper series, all right, with educational offerings for parishioners of all ages, youth through adults. Um, imagine being able to have a quarterly Red Cross blood drive, okay, where we can serve the community in that way. On a different thing, think about having art visits that would rotate from local artists here in the Davidson and the Lake Norman area, uh, being able to show off their uh, skills and abilities. And we'd have space for yoga and Tai Chi and uh, other nonprofit meetings and events. Keep on imagining. Think about a Thanksgiving lunch for our preschool families, all right, and being able to have them out to celebrate. All right. Our youth program has been growing. Think about having space where we can have uh, offerings for our youth, such as dance parties, scavenger hunts, lock-ins, and more. How about continuing education offerings for seniors and others as well? And more space for some of our most beloved activities, things like Vacation Bible School, Las Posadas, Cards for Kids, Oktoberfest, and my favorite, the Throw of Tuesday Pancake Dinner. <laughs> So once again, another view of, of, of what the building could look like and where the space would be, all right, and you can see it there. To give you a little bit uh, more of a bird's eye view, think about looking down on the top and you can get a view of it there and then this is a schematic of you and that's what the, where the parish hall would look like if so you opened up your roof. So yeah, we're here in the nave today, okay? So this floor plan would give us about a 60 by 90 space, 5,400 square feet which is about the same size as this nave to help you picture the space, okay? Um, this, this particular location and design would conform to the master plan that was submitted when we built this church and approved by the town of Davidson. Conforming to the master plan is critically important because it lessens a lot of the regulatory stuff that we would have to go through with the town of Davidson. If we can stay to that plan, we can move through this process more easily and more quickly by staying with what we said we were going to do. The building's a single-story building, all right, um, and it would be connected to our building by a covered walkway to get from this building into that building. And all of that's done to maintain uh, the cost of all of that. So to build this building will cost about $2.4 million, as long as we stay disciplined and don't get too crazy in our design process about how we do things. So $2.4 million bucks is a lot of money, all right? Um, and uh, so we worked hard to say, is this doable in our parish? And with working with the Finance Committee, we are fortunate that our parish has been very careful about how it manages its funds, and we've built up some pretty good cash reserves. Out of those cash reserves, we could use about $400,000 at most to put towards a parish hall. That would still leave us with adequate reserves uh, in case something shocking should happen to our parish. All right? Uh, the rule of thumb from finance folks is you ought to have two to six months of your operating costs. If we spent $400,000, we still have four months of operating costs in our reserves. So it's a safe number that we could use if we need to, all right? We've also been very diligent about paying down our current mortgage. And in fact, over the last year, we've had some very pleasant and unexpected gifts to help us pay down that mortgage even more quickly. So we have the capacity to take on up to another $800,000 in mortgage and be able to manage that within uh, our budget plans. Which means we would need to raise the rest of the money. We can pay for half of it with the mortgage and existing reserves. We have to raise another $1.2 million to be able to pay uh, for all of this. What's kind of exciting is we said, can we raise $1.2 million? Is that doable at St. Albans? So we went out and did what's called a silent campaign. We talked to about 20 families to see if they would be willing to contribute and support um, all of this. And between that money and those conversations and the uh, money that was raised during that, I told you that surprise period in the beginning, we have at this point commitments for $975,000 of the $1.2 million. So, now, I will also tell you, because the finance folks went ahead to tell you this, we would love to raise more than 1.2, so we don't have to take out a full mortgage of $800,000. Wouldn't that be nice, okay, to be able to, to do that or use less of our reserves? So what does it take to get to that, all right? And this is what we talked to people about. So we said we had about $170,000 already given to us, so we needed to raise another million dollars. What does it take to raise a million dollars? Well, this is just a model of, of one mathematical way of doing it. We said if there was 10 families that would be willing to donate 
in a, in, over a three-year time period, a range of 25,000 to 150,000, 20 families who could provide 10 to 20,000, and 70 families in the 1,000 to 5,000 range, and lots of people who would give us gifts around $1,000 or so, we can get to the $1 million. That's what it would take to do it. And so we've been out, as I said, we've talked to some families. All right, and what have we found so far? Well, we said we needed 10 families to contribute in this range. We got 15, okay? All right, we need 20 families um, in the second tier, and you can see we had 13 already stepped up to be able to do that for us. And then out of the 70 families we need here, we've gotten four, and we need lots of people in that uh, category of $1,000. And these are, these are pledges over a three-year time period. Um, but that, that gave us the encouragement to say, people are feeling the same vision, the same desire for a parish hall that our committee is feeling, and they're willing to step up and support that. So now we have to close the gap between the 975,000 and the million two that we need to be able to do all of this. So a lot of you in this room have already given very generously, and we thank you for that. What we're asking you today is, there are a lot of people who aren't in this room who maybe haven't quite heard the call to bring us back together that we need to reach out to. Now we're gonna be doing it, we've got a campaign, we're gonna try to be sending things to people and calling them and talking to them, but we need your help as well. Right, the, the testimonies of the eight or 10 of us that are on the committee won't be as powerful as your individual testimony saying, yeah, I'm not actually not on the committee, but here's why I gave. Here's why I believe in this. And help us reach everyone in our, our parish community so that we can really blow through that number. So if we can raise the money, what does it look like? Well, you can see we're in our capital campaign phase right now. And we're trying to keep this short. We don't want to drag this on forever. So our goal is that we had our conversations with some of the people we mentioned earlier, and now we're doing the broad campaign that we hope to run for just six weeks. Our goal is to raise the one, rest of the 1.2 by St. Albans Day, appropriately enough, which is in the middle of June. So it takes us about six weeks to be able to do that. Um, assuming we can do that, where that's the critical point, okay? where we can say, do we have the money or don't we? One of the things our vestry has been very good about is not spending money we don't have commitments for. So we've all agreed that if we can't get to the $2.4 million, or the 1.2 we have to raise, we can't go forward with the parish hall. All right? We have to be sure we have at least $1.2 million in pledges to be able to do that. So that's gonna be an important decision point for us. But assuming that we have the money available, the next thing we would do is all the background work that needs to be done to get ready to build. There's architectural work to be done, engineering work to be done, permits we have to get approved by the city, all right? And a lot of, uh, of other preparatory work before you can start digging in the ground, all right? At the same time, we're gonna start finalizing the financial stuff, work to get the mortgage approved, uh, and all of those kinds of things. Hopefully, the pledges that we've started to have will start coming in over that three-year time period. And then we can have a point once we get this, this pre-work done to be sure that the parish hall is gonna fit within the budget that we have. We have a high degree of confidence that'll work, but until you get all the work done, you never know 100%. So then we're gonna do that. Assuming that happens, we could be breaking ground in the latter part of 2023, and we could have our first big party there at the end of 2024, okay? That's, that's our timeline, and that's what we're hoping to be able to do. So think about the first person that's gonna get married in this nave and have their reception in that parish hall. Think about the first person who's gonna have a baby in a year or two, have a baptized here, and then we're gonna welcome that child here into our community, and then we're gonna really welcome that child into our community down in the parish hall. So these are the things that I want you to start believing and seeing and feeling and thinking and sharing this, the passion that we've built to get this thing built, and it's gonna take all of us to do it. So last slide, all right, this is the committee that's been working hard. Many of them are here. Many of them will be joining us at the picnic outside. Uh, we're now we're wearing these fancy name tags. So at any point today, over the next six weeks, feel free to stop any of us and ask any questions that you have. We're happy to talk about it. We're very excited about this project. And we're gonna ask you to join us in supporting the project. All right? There are brochures, many of you have them in your hand, that give you lots of information, even more depth than Richard and I covered so far this morning. And we would ask you to read through that and to think about and to prayerfully consider whether you can support the parish hall or not. And if you can, we would ask you to submit a three-year pledge all right, over the next six weeks and submit it here to the church office. 
Actually, the back of the pamphlet has a nifty little pledge form already on it, so you can fill that out, uh, or you can contact uh, the office and do it electronically if you prefer to do that. But we would, we would encourage you to do that. So we promised we'd keep the presentation short, and so the formal part is done, and now we're up to questions, and Jane, you're first. I'll be first. Um, we, we didn't do such a good job building here. We used a thimble for a kitchen. The, the two seat bathrooms are laughable. Are we sure that we're going to build a large enough kitchen that we're going to have enough storage down there so we don't have to use the bathrooms for storage up here in the kitchen. Um, I'm just worried about making sure that this size is a lot better than that size. I, I, I can assure you, and I think others can too, it, it will definitely be a lot better than this size. <laughs> the, the intention is, and what the, and what the design is that we, we put up there, okay, and have worked with the uh, design firm on initially is to have a very substantial kitchen, all right, um, that will give us the ability to create meals for several hundred people. Um, and that's what we want to be able to do. Those of you who've been part of parishes that have those kind of kitchens um, will know that often there's a whole ministry around people that love to prepare meals, all right, and come together and be able to do that. And it's a lot of fun and an important ministry that they have to be able to cook and prepare meals for several hundred people. And it'll have, yes, there's bathroom, the whole set, a separate set of bathrooms down there to accommodate that, okay? And then a large flexible space that we can set up in a variety of ways depending on the kind of event that we want to hold. Of course, everything's a trade-off, right? So the bigger you make the bathrooms, the smaller the hall becomes. The bigger you make the kitchen, the smaller the hall becomes. So, so, um, so if we good. had unlimited funds, we'd be right with it. <laughs> Um, so currently, down where the parish hall would be touching the main building, uh, there's the youth group, um, center, like where we meet, and I was wondering what would happen to that if we were to build this? So, so great question. None of the existing building gets changed, okay? This is a separate building. It'll be several feet behind the building that we have, okay? And, and there's a walkway yep. that comes down. It's hard to see in this rendering, but yes. there is a walkway that comes down and, and covers it so you can walk without being exposed to, the, to rain or snow or you know, anything unpleasant that way. Um, but it actually will not impact our current rooms at all. We're not going to change any of those. Okay. Cost of actually connecting, remodeling those rooms and connecting internally is quite high, so that would be a huge trade-off. Um, so we, we are looking at not doing that right now. That's right. Um, the only change I hope, and of course this comes to cost, is you can see those bricks right there. Maybe we'll get rid of that siding and we'll have it all look like a brick veneer at least so it's all tied in architecturally from the outside. But internally, nothing will change. Oh, I'm sorry. We're here. Okay. By the way, happy birthday. Yeah. What a gift. I mean, I am so excited about this kitchen, I can hardly stand it. I was parish life for many years and trying to take events out of that kitchen, in, having moved all the chairs, decorate, and then, oh my gosh, have to take it all down, get ready for church. It was exhausting, but it was fun. But those are the things, as you said, that keep our church together yeah. and make us grow as a family. And I think of this as my family, so I cannot wait. It's Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Good, thank you. I think there was a question over here. In your projections for the construction, what inflation factors have you considered with runaway? That was your question. Okay. Yep. So Great we, lines. we have used the some engineers. James in here. James yep, is here. You want to because you, you helped uh, work with your your friends to make the projections. So do you want to answer that question? Yeah, I'm happy to, and it's a good question. In, Thank you for yourself. it. James, introduce yourself. Everybody knows who you are. Okay. Um, the inflation rate we use for inflation is 5%. Now, historically, in the construction industry, 5% was a gracious plenty. Look at the past year, 18 months, it is not. Um, but what we have built into that 2.4 number is also a substantial contingency number. So if inflation trends continue to kind of outpace that 5%, we've also got another bucket of money to tap into, and that's encompassed in that 2.4 uh, holistic bottom line. My question is kind of related. Um, I sense a, I have a sense of urgency with, with interest rates rising, that the longer we wait, the more expensive it gets. Would you agree? 
Well, I, I would agree we have a sense of urgency for a lot of reasons, okay? Not just inflation, all right? I'm not sure what inflation is going to do, and I'm not sure what interest rates are going to continue to do, okay? Um, the, uh, under, the, under our current timeline, we would start working on a mortgage, all right? We don't have to work on a mortgage until next year, okay? But we would time that based on what interest rates are doing and what they're projected to do based on the members of our finance committee who are much closer to that knowledge than some of the rest of us are. Yeah, I, I think we all know that interest rates are gonna go up next month, but that's gonna make things unknowable for 2023. Interest rates could actually be go up and then come back down. They could go up and stay the same, they could go up. So we're gonna keep, keep a look at that and not, you know, try to do our best to not act too rashly and lock in a too high rate. Uh, Pat and I were uh, one of the first couples to move into this neighborhood, and we've been members of this church ever since. There's been a, a lot of talk over the years about the need for a parish hall. And I just want to thank the people that have been working on this project for all of their work and putting together this excellent plan, which, cons which includes not only what it's going to look like, but how we're going to pay for it. And I'm just very grateful for what y'all have done and uh, certainly hoping this moves ahead briskly. Uh, I'm gonna be 80 this year and I wanna see it. <laughs> <laughs> There's your I love that. Man. Is there any uh, thought of trying to raise money outside of this parish? I don't know if the, the town would help i don't know if other rich people hanging around here might want to help um what do you think we'll take money anywhere it'll come from. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. That's it. yeah i think if, if people have suggestions on other sources we can tap yeah. into we have looked at some like um uh, foundations and so forth to see if there's money available there we haven't found any yet okay but doesn't mean we're not we're going to stop looking okay so if people know of opportunities please get a hold of one of us on the committee and let us know yeah, or people yeah. or people and we, we'd love to be able to, to see if we can tap into that um i'm i'm a newcomer to this uh congregation so i'll just sort of add my newcomer thanks yeah. to this committee and and uh, the vision that you and this congregation have my my question is i was sort of wondering if um, uh, anticipating the best that in fact we're able to raise more than what you're asking for it, it's kind of a timeline kind of question so if, if the pledges are greater than you anticipate might that affect um, the design of the parish hall, um, how big it will be, and particularly the questions first addressed about um, the kitchen and uh, restrooms as well as usable space. Right. Uh, I'll, and I'll let James add on to what I'm saying. I think the, the box that we have designed, if you go down there and look at the stakes, we don't have a whole lot more space for us for, to build there. Um, and you know, initially when we were just, you know, throwing spitballs at the wall, we were looking at a two-story thing and you know, all totally integrated, but that, the cost of that would be, unless you know, Bill Gates walks in and says, here's $5 million for your parish holding. Mm -hmm. We're all open that, but. So the answer is yes, in a way, other than probably the constraint of the big box is our governing limitation and one story. Um, it's a, a lot of that will be decided in that design phase, right? They're gonna be going through and actually putting harder numbers and, and you know, plumbing and things like that that would, uh, determine what we could do. Um, but a lot of people, I've been a m member of this parish for 10 years, a lot of people, we raise more, and I hope we raise more than, than the 1.2, are gonna say, knock that mortgage down, or let's use less of our cash. And so that's something that's very important to us, and we got the back of our mind as well. Go ahead. Uh, Richard, you did a good job, great question. Just to give people a context for the size of the kitchen we're talking about, look at that one. And then when we go outside on the playground, look around, imagine that kitchen times four, five, six. It's gonna be much larger. It's gonna be a full service kitchen. Yep. So, you know, from a visual perspective, look at that, multiply it by five or so, and that's what we're gonna in introduce in the parish hall. Right. 
Can we have some more questions up here? Yep. Mm. Getting my exercise in. <laughs> uh, it's, it's in. Okay. Um, I believe you said that connecting the new parish hall um, to the church building would be a covered walkway. Have you considered uh, how much more it would cost to have it enclosed so that it was available even if it's blowing a hoolie yeah, or yeah, yeah. freezing cold? Um, how much more would that add to the cost? I, we don't have a precise number on, the, on what that would cost. Um, we, are, we believe it would take us far enough above the $2.4 million we don't have the money to do that. Now to the earlier question that was raised, if, a, if we raise more than the 1.2, all right, that gives the parish hall committee and the vestry op opportunities to look at options, okay, within certain constraints. The building itself can't be any bigger, as, as you heard, because that's what's in our master plan, and that would trigger some challenges with, with the town of Davidson, and challenges is probably a very soft word to use, okay? <laughs> uh, and, but, but could we... No, it, it would not. So it, 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 I won't say it's not a possibility. It depends on, on how much money we can raise and then how would the vestry decide to spend that money in addition to what's already planned for the parish hall. I think so. Okay. And I there, mean, there are ways to, to attack your problem without the hard wall of fixing, of enclosing that. I don't know if you've seen many of those wedding tents. When they think in rain, they have those pieces they put on the side. And so the awning may be able to support something like that as an interim step, and then if we can raise more money, we could do a fully enclosed walkway. Thank you. This is very exciting. Um, if we have potential donors in mind, because that's how my mind works, mm -hmm. um, is there a one contact person we should try to refer them to, like maybe for a phone call, an in-person, whatever you're doing now. That's uh, I would, and I'm going to put you on the spot, I would use Carmen as the clearinghouse, and she'll get it to the right person on the committee. Because everybody knows Carmen, and trust Carmen. Okay, <laughs> sounds good, you thanks. Say? Yes, yeah. that would be a great, that, that would be you're a good place that? to start. And Car she, and with she that. knows all of us on the committee and, and keep them coming. any of us, so. Carmen the clearinghouse, she has a new nickname. <laughs> I like it. Did you have one? one? There's some more questions over here, I think. First of all, thank you to all of you on the committee. This is fabulous. Um, when our school recently built an athletic park, they offered opportunities depending on how much money you donated. Like there's a brick walkway mm -hmm. and you can have personalized bricks or stones or however you wanted to and you can put whatever message you want on it. But it was an opportunity for families to kind sure. of see their donation and maybe be a little more inclined to donate that thousand dollars or and each tier came with some and it didn't have to be your family you could say in honor or in recognition sure. of or memory of so i didn't know if that's something you guys were considering yeah we we are, are we talked about that not in depth because we've mainly been talking about can we even do this but we, there would certainly be recognition for everyone who donates to this um and then i actually would like to do kind of the brick thing maybe as a as a secondary thing as we get better, further into design to say, okay, and here's some extra touches we could put on it. We get a little bit nicer refrigerator in the, um, in the kitchen mm -hmm. if we get, we raise this much through our brick campaign. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna like just tip my hand a little bit there. We, we might keep coming back for things like that. But as far as the recognition, other than the fact that we're building this together, you know, obviously the donors will be recognized. No, 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 no. I think that's important. Yeah. yeah. I will. Yeah. I'll add that the pledge form in the um, pamphlet that you have does have a line where you can um, give your, make your pledge in honor or memory of someone. It will then be to the Grow, Gather, Serve committee to figure out what that ends up looking like in terms of the recognition, but we, we have put that on the pledge form so you can go ahead and be thinking of who you would like to honor uh, with your pledge. Mm -hmm. But I, I just want to add on top of that, I've been astounded by the generosity of this parish thus far, and that's with not promising even, you know, I'm writing your name down on a piece of paper. So, you know, this is going to happen, folks. It's just time for the rest of us to get on board. A lot of people have already seated the pump. 
I just have a, well, first of all, I think $975,000 so far is phenomenal, so uh, thank you to people who uh, did that. Um, I have a question about whether there's a chance that this also could be a revenue generating space in the long term in the sense that, you know, renting it out to local organizations to use it at times that we're not using it or something. So is, there, is there a thought towards that? Yes, there are thoughts towards that, and, we, and the short answer is yes. The but is we are a nonprofit organization, and that puts some limits on how we can do that, all right, and what we can do. So we have to be sure that we maintain our nonprofit status, but having done that, there are ways you can ask people to use the space and make donations and those kinds of things, and certainly that's an opportunity for us. And the other answer to that is we do have it cited in the town of Davidson, and they have a lot of opinions on what we can do with things. So keep that quiet until we've got it built, then, you know, we'll try to do what we can. I think we had one here. Did you have one? Does the cost include the playground? Yes. Yes. Moving the playground is absolute priority. Yes, it does. So when um, St. Albans was built, this also became a meeting place for the whole neighborhood. And this neighborhood of St. Albans has really loved having that space. And I had a friend of mine who lives in the neighborhood say to me, I want to donate to that. That would be so right. wonderful for the neighborhood, for the right. town. We used yeah. to have candidates come in here. A absolutely, Pat. I think that's something we, we, ought to, we want to continue to pursue. We have developed quite a good relationship with the neighborhood, as, right. as you know. Um, and we would we would do that we would want to invite them to participate. Yeah, we have um, we have good lines of communication there. So there's representative of the gardens and uh, people are asking, they're like, so you know, they, they may be afraid uh, not afraid, I don't know what they don't come to church, but they're looking, they're watching and they're interested and they're appreciative. So I second what Pat I think Jane brought it up too. Yeah. Another question back here. Will the new playground be as big as the current playground or bigger? <laughs> yes. Yes. It, we, want it, we want a substantial playground. It's, it's part of who we are. It's part of how we support our preschool, how we support activities on Sunday mornings and in the neighborhood. So yes, it will be every bit as good, if not better, than the one we have today. <laughs> Okay. Yet think, think of another imagine of when it's raining out there and the playground's not an option, you got a new big indoor space to play. <laughs> One of the nice things about the current playground is that it's shady. Yeah. And that playground doesn't show any shade for our little peeps. They're going to get their little bottoms burned on the slide. <laughs> so I hope that there's going to be a canopy or something included in the design. We'll see what we can do uh, as we get to that. And, and you know, exactly where we position the playground could matter, too, OK? Because there's a couple different areas out here we could position it. And we'll want to take a look at that as well. So good. Okay. Another question over here. I feel like Vanna White. Just a very quick comment is that I think as, as glorious as all of this is for this parish community, um, I, I also think that outrage is central, right? If, if this is just all about growing us, um, that's not the work of Christ. So, so some of the, the suggestions you've already given us to imagine possibilities, blood drives, mm -hmm. um, perhaps who, who knows we can we can do sort of um, f you know have this be uh, provide meals. Provide just, but but I, I just think an outreach focus is critical to the true life of this congregation and the use of this new space. We we agree with you 100. percent right? Outreach is a big part of who we are as Christians, and it's a big part of our parish. We have very active outreach ministries, as, as you may know, um, and we hope to expand and continue upon those and use this space for that. And that's that's one of the major reasons we want to build parish. Yeah, just, I'll just give one example of 
Um, if you've ever participated, anybody here has volunteered with the Rise for Hunger that we um, have done pre-pandemic. Um, we had to squeeze into the preschool area to set that up and do that. And so that's just one example of what the parish hall space would give us is a place where we can do more of that kind of outreach stuff. So hopefully this is an, an, an enabler and a catalyst for everything that we do. So I'm going to suggest because the Ministry of Fun is waiting for us to come down and join them for yeah. some fun, okay? We're getting there. That uh, you've got committee members here, we've all got our name tags on, there's a number of us here, um, either here in the nave or down there at the, uh, at the picnic. We're happy to continue to answer questions that you have, but I would suggest we adjourn down to, uh, to have a little fun Enjoy this there. beautiful day. Okay. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you. Thank you.